And I, of course, didn't believe that. But then I researched it, and I went to the in, in India House Library, you know, dug out his, his, his records. And then his, my mother, after, after his death, when she was going through my father's papers, discovered his discharge papers. They were, they were kind of in eight different pieces. And when I looked at them, you know, I realized that, in fact, my father was telling the truth. In fact, he was not just very well, had lots of honors, but he, 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 had, he had shown bravery, you know, uh, under fire. So I went to India House and got the real discharge papers and confirmed that, 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 that every, everything, as in fact, he was a decorated soldier. And I tried to find out if anybody had written anything about him. And eventually I discovered that his commanding officer, certain Lord Birdwood, who wrote a biography, and I thought, well, if he's, you know, he served under him, he must have said something about him. And in fact, I searched his biography, and I just found about two lines, which said basically that one of the coolies had gallantly rescued two of our soldiers in, in when fighting in Afghanistan. And by looking at the dates and all that, I confirmed that he was actually talking about my grandfather. So here is my grandfather who's given so much to the Raj, and all he gets is very discriminatory two lines, kind of being dismissed. Uh, but in fact, he was given sword of honor, and I also discovered a photograph uh, with with him standing with the sword of honor, and and I finally confirmed that the sword of honor was given to him in Delhi Dalbar in 1932. Now, what it tells me is that it's not just that I am here, but actually I belong here because mm. my family has has struggled for Britain. Uh, you know, and if you look at all the people who are, who are here most of them will have connection with the British Army. If you go to a place like, like Leicester, you find lots of Punjabis there. Both Punjabis from the Pakistan side, the Muslim Punjabis, and Punjabis from the India side, who are basically Sikh. Why are these people in, in Leicester? Because there is a, there is a Royal Leicestershire Regiment, and the Royal Le Leicestershire Regiment had Punjabis of both sides who uh, fought during the, during the Second World War. And so when the India and Pakistan was created, these people felt more loyal to the regiment and they came to Leicester, mm -hmm. you know, and they had a romantic attachment to Leicester. And if you go to, there's, there's a new museum in Leicester where, in fact, you, not, you now find the stories of all these people. They tell their stories of their grandfathers, how they joined the Royal uh, Lancashire, uh, Lancashire um, uh, Regiment and, and how, they, how, how, how they came. So there's a very, very s strong connection. So it's not just that we are, we are new here. There's, there's, no, that there's nothing new about 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 the fact that we are here we are here because we belong here and we have our families have identified with, with, with britain over two million Asians died during, during the during the world wars serving britain therefore we have you know it's a natural place for us to belong you were talking there about hidden family history and one of the other themes of the book it seemed to me was the empire britain's amnesia or highly selective view of history mm. and that was really brought home to me when you talked about your school days and your yes. history teacher yes. Mr yes. Brilliant which yes. was like a sort of textbook example really of, of, of sort of the, um, the the colony answering back as it were yeah. Um, yeah. for this yeah. this view of history which was um, highly imperial yeah absolutely I mean uh, 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 my history teacher, in many respects, he was a wonderful man because he he resembled Einstein. He had his hair, you know, like that, and and he and his memory wasn't wasn't very good. I mean, he was the classical absent absent uh, uh, professor, but he had a very rigid notion of of, of history. And essentially, the, the history that we were taught. I mean, first of all, history of colonialism or of empire played a very little part. Most of the history we were taught were, you know, Second World War, First World War, Nazis, you know, and the monarchy and, and all that, which, which I think is, is, is important. I'm, I'm not saying that, that that history is not important, but in a multicultural Britain, you need, you need to appreciate that there are several histories. There are, there are histories of the Caribbeans who came here, the history of Asians who, who are here. There's the history of Islam that Europe has. You know, without without Islam, there would there would not be a European Renaissance. So there's that very important history. So if you want to have a inclusive and coherent community, then you have got to have inclusive and coherent histories. You know, Britain has number of number of histories. So when Mr. Brilliant was actually teaching me, first of all, I think I ought to tell you that I went to Brookhouse Secondary School in Clapton. It was. Uh, about 10, 12 years ago, described as the second worst school in Britain and was closed down. And in fact, has been closed down a number of times and have been reopened. And now I think it's some sort of academy. And we had a very, very 
good and uh, humane headmaster called Mr. Harris. Now, Mr. Harris was very humane, but he believed in the old-fashioned regiment. So he was very good at giving you six of the best. So you had to kind of, uh, I frequently had to bend down where I was, you know, I was taken to Mr. Harris and they had to bend down and I was whacked. I was quite a kind of handful as a, as a, as a, as a, as a young student. So when Mr. Billion was teaching me history, he was basically te- teaching how the British went to India, there was hardly anything there, and how they brought civilization, civilization to India, introduced railways, and did the geographical survey, you know, because we Indians had no idea what our own plants were and things like that. And of course, when he came to 1857, he was talking about the rebellion and all that, so I kind of objected. First of all, you know, I, I, I had known a little bit of Indian history, and I realized that when the British came there, 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 was, there was the Mughal Empire, <laughs> and we had a great, you know, and magnificent society and a highly multicultural, you know, culture uh, with all different kind of ethnicities and religion, you know, mixing and, and thriving. So I objected to the idea of rebellion. I said, no, this was not a rebellion. In fact, this was a freedom fighter. We, you, were, you had colonized us. We were trying to liberate ourselves. Mm-hmm. And Mr. F- uh, Billion did not take very kindly to that. I think f- first I simply rebelled by turning and throwing the books about and all that. But eventually, when he had persisted on teaching us that and paying virtually no attention to me, I one day kind of, with a complete plan, came back and brought some paraffin and poured it on my desk and the textbook and set fire to them, uh, which became a major event mm. in the school's <laughs> history, if you like. Mm. And then I was marched to uh, uh, marched to, uh, to Mr. Harris's office. But Mr. Harris, as I said, was a very humane person. He realized there was something very problematic here, and he listened to very carefully what I was saying. And he also discovered that my anger was not just at Mr. Brilliant, but also what happened outside the school. And outside the school, we had what we used to be called in those days black shirts. These were people who used to support Mosley and uh, I had to go to lunch uh, for lunch at home. So my journey from s- school to home, which was about 12 to 15 minutes, I was a jet- leisurely walk, every morning became a kind of battlefield. You know, we, these, these guys we, we would pick on Asian and, 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 and black children. Uh, so Mr. Harris then promised to do something about it. And to his credit, um, he, he actually did. I mean, he did his best in that sense. Mm-hmm.